Three, two, one, ignition. Engine temperatures are nominal. Initiating flight transformation sequence. All right, this is officially the new coolest ship in Star Citizen. So Star Citizen just kicked off their International Aerospace Expo event with one of the coolest ships I've ever seen in the game. The just released Gatak Sulin marks one of the few alien ships that's been added so far and it is blowing all of my expectations away. This thing takes detail, transformation, unique style to the max, both on the outside and on the inside. A very unique trait about the Sulin is that it lands vertically. Basically, you're aiming up at the ceiling or the sky when you land this ship, which is kind of like a classic sci-fi way of doing spacecraft. It does, however, make landing and taking off a bit of a different process, although I do enjoy the challenge. However, this ship really does show that Star Citizen needs some sort of dedicated landing cam or assistance within the cockpit. Now, internally, the Sulin is a work of art. The artist at CIG really blew it out of the water this time. Opening it at the side has the same sort of hover stair fold out system that you might expect from the car to wall. And I would expect something similar from the Santok Yai. But once you get into the ship, the fold out wall mechanisms are stunning. Check out this weapon rack here. You can put two full size weapons on here, two sidearms and two gadgets. They seem to sort of just magnet to the side of the weapon rack here. And then once you're done, you hit the button and the wall folds back up pretty seamlessly into this beautiful piece of architecture. Same with all the components. They're all just hidden behind these complex looking wall panels. Now, due to the ship's vertical design, it's got a quick little elevator lift that takes you from the bottom floor up to the cabin area. And the cabin is pretty impressive. It's got a bed, of course, for sleeping. And then the bathroom itself has the same crazy fold-out wall stuff for the toilet and toilet paper. Because why wouldn't you have one of the most complex looking animations I've ever seen in a video game for toilet paper and a toilet. Now, of course, one of the coolest sequences on the ship is getting into the pilot seat. You're in a giant room, you sit on the seat, and then it turns you upwards as the ship transforms and pushes you up into the cockpit, which has got incredible visibility. But you basically take a hover elevator into the actual pilot seat. Now, flying the Sulin is an absolute delight. It's got incredible visibility. It's got great maneuverability, especially for a ship of its size. And it's fun to low fly and look at the landscape. You can even look down by your legs and see the ground moving below you. It is really just a delight to move around and explore with. And it feels like with Star Citizen's recent ship releases that they're really starting to embrace just the fun factor of flying and getting around. Star Citizen is such a big game and a lot of your time just simply is going to be spent moving from one location to another. So if you've got a ship that's fun to fly, it really makes that transition much more enjoyable. Now this ship is marketed as a light freighter, but of course it comes with some weapons, some actual decent firepower, three size three repeaters pack a decent punch. Although the capacitor isn't particularly impressive, it can still do some combat if you need it to. I wouldn't recommend it if you're going into the game with an emphasis on PVP or PVE, but it can certainly run missions up to HRTs, which is what I tested. Beyond the high risk target missions though, you might start to struggle as it just doesn't have particularly good DPS and it is a pretty large target. So it's hard to miss this thing, I would imagine. Now, I do have to give the devs some props for putting 12 size two missiles on this thing, all concealed within the wings of the spaceship. Uh, pretty dope looking bespoke missile launchers. So you do have firepower and it can be a bit tempting to try and just take this thing into combat because you're like, well, I got all these missiles. I mean, I should use them, right? Well, probably not. If you're ever caught in a PvP situation with somebody with an actual ship designed for combat, you're almost certainly going to lose with this thing just due to its size. With only two size one shield generators, this thing really just is more of a balloon, kind of a big target that will pop pretty easy. 
Its incredible cockpit visibility, though, does make it fun for sort of scanning around and shooting at ground targets, though. I was enjoying shooting some of the NPCs on Ghost Hollow. Even though the weapons don't converge particularly well, it's um, still perfectly adequate for running pretty much all of the basic mission activities in the game. It almost feels like a decent scouting ship to fly over landscapes, scan visually to see what's out there, land, and then bring stuff back to your ship. Now, the ship is described as a light freighter, and it can carry six SCU of cargo, or at least it's supposed to. However, there is a bug with the ship right now, and the cargo containers will not properly seat into the actual carrying units that are on the outside of the ship. Also, six SCU of cargo isn't that impressive for a ship of this size. What is impressive though is its quantum jump fuel range. Now the fuel ranges in these types of ships can change all the time so I wouldn't bet on this ship always having the incredible range that it does but I was able to put the fastest QT drive in this thing and zip around Stanton no problem and have plenty of fuel to spare. That can be a very very useful attribute especially as a starter ship getting into the game not having to refuel often is quite nice. Now, from a practicality standpoint, there are a lot of design elements in this ship that don't necessarily make a ton of sense. The vertical landing, very cool, but it could also slow down your cargo delivery if you're trying to focus on speed. But then again, dedicated pilots would probably get quicker with this. And the vertical layout, while extremely cool, internally it does kind of waste a lot of space with big hollow areas, especially in the cockpit, that you're thinking, well, why does this even need to be here? It's just making me a bigger target at the end of the day. Compared to, say, an Avenger Titan, which is much sleeker, can carry eight SCU of cargo and has more firepower and a narrower profile for combat, this thing's pretty much just gonna lose straight up in any sort of one-on-one -on -one fight against it. Then again, the Avenger Titan has a much shorter quantum fuel range, so if you are purely using it for light freight for the most part, then you could easily make an argument for the Sulin. Now, as far as starter ships go, I think the Sulin is an excellent option. It can do everything you need it to with excellent style. Its internal quarters really make it feel like it could be your home base ship. And the extended range on this thing is going to be very forgiving for new players who don't want to have to constantly stop at stations to refuel and slow down their trips. I'm a huge fan of the visual style of this ship. It really does feel truly alien and I'm excited to see more Xi'an ships come into the game and maybe even some Xi'an fleets flying around the verse at some point. We're probably a little ways off from that, but it is fun and it adds a whole bunch of needed flavor to the Star Citizen universe. Now, of course, if you're new to the game and you're thinking about picking up a starter pack or joining the free fly week that's going on right now, make sure to use my referral code when you make an account and it'll give you some extra credits when you first get into the game, which can go a long way. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me. And next up, check out this video on all of the features left for CIG to complete for the spaceships in the game. It's quite a lengthy list, but it'll give you a good idea about what's coming down the road and maybe even how long it's gonna take. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay.